This photo has recently become an internet sensation in China because the six people depicted are the top players in China's chip industry, and now they are all in big trouble. On their backdrop, it says, "Change the world with dreams." The reality is that it's the dream of getting rich that has changed their destiny. There was an unprecedented storm that occurred in China's chip industry at the end of July 2022. In the past few days, several senior executives of the organization behind the semiconductor industry in mainland China have been taken away by the CCP's Central Commission for Discipline, Inspection, and Investigation. Top executives at Tsinghua Unigroup, a chip giant with close ties to the organization, also fell. This storm suggests that Xi Jinping, the current CCP leader, can no longer endure the corruption permeating the industry, and is trying to launch an anti-corruption campaign against influential figures to save China's chip industry. In recent years, amidst the great technological war between China and the U.S. to get rid of dependence on foreign chips under the personal urging of Xi Jinping, China has launched a chip-making campaign. In 2014, the General Office of China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology announced the official establishment of the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund Company Limited, also known as the National Big Fund or Big Fund. It's considered the national team of the Chinese chip industry, focusing on investment in integrated circuit chip manufacturing. The first phase of the fund injection involved about 120 billion RMB. On October 22, 2019, the second phase of the big fund registered a capital of 204.15 billion RMB. Together, these funds are more than 320 billion RMB, or US 47.3 billion. According to the leverage ratio of one to five, the national big fund would have driven more than US 240 billion of capital. The first shareholder of this big fund is China's Ministry of Finance. The rest are large central enterprises, enterprises with local government backgrounds, private enterprises, etc. In 2021, some media estimated that the Chinese government had invested U.S. 100 billion to fund domestic chip makers to compete with the West. The big fund has been called the giant. It once carried the hope of China's chip industry. This is the investment map of the first phase of the fund. This is a chart of the 38 companies invested in Phase Two of the fund as of March 2022. The two phases of investment cover all aspects of integrated circuit or IC, including IC manufacturing, IC design, packaging and testing, semiconductor materials and equipment, and industry ecological construction. The big fund adopts a two-tier management structure. The first tier is the organization called National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund Company Limited, which provides overall management in terms of national strategy and the direction of industrial development and the approval of significant projects, etc. The second tier is entrusted to a specialized company as the sole manager of the fund, namely Huashin Investment Management Company. It conducts investment management for the fund. Eight years have passed, but high-end Chinese chips haven't yet been produced, and the management of the state-level chip industry has collapsed as a whole. On July 30th, the CCP Central Commission for Discipline and Inspection announced that Ding Wenwu, general manager of the big fund, and the National IC Industry Investment Fund Company were under investigation. Ding served as deputy director and director of the Electronic Information Department of the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. On July 28th, Xiao Yaqing, Party Secretary and Minister of the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, fell from power. Xiao was the spearhead of the Chinese Communist Party's attempt to build a world-class chip industry and eliminate its dependence on the U.S. Sources say Xiao attempted to slit his wrists in a suicide attempt before being taken away from his Beijing residence. To the surprise of the outside world, the very next day, Xi Jinping immediately appointed a replacement. A longtime aerospace official to take over the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. On the evening of July 25th, China's tech giant and former chairman of Tsinghua Unigroup, Zhao Weiguo, was taken away for investigation. On July 15th, Lu Jian, former deputy director of the China Development Bank Development Fund Management Department, was investigated. 
Liu Jin was involved in many investment operations of the big fund, of which he was the sole manager and former president of Hua Xin Investment Management Company. A deputy general manager of Hua Xin Investment's third department of investment was also taken away for investigation. He may be related to the case of Liu Jin, previously the partner of the Shenzhen Sub Fund of the big fund. And the former vice president of Hua Xin Investment was also investigated in succession. In addition, on July 29th, several technology websites in the mainland claimed that Diao Xi Jing, former director of the electronics division of the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, former president of Tsinghua Unigroup, and chairman and CEO of Shanghai Tianshu Jixing Semiconductor Company Limited, was under investigation. However, Shanghai Tianshu Jixin Semiconductor said, "It is just a rumor, and everything is normal at the top of the company." Some sources say that the list of arrests is not yet done. We believe that these bigwigs who have been investigated are not isolated cases, but rather belong to a huge network. Let's take a look at the chip giant Tsinghua Unigroup, which is deep in debt. In July 2021, Tsinghua Unigroup announced that it was overwhelmed by 200 billion RMB of debt. It was filed for bankruptcy reorganization by its creditor in a Beijing court because it could not repay its bonds at maturity. The Beijing District Court approved the reorganization plan on January 17th, 2022. Tsinghua Unigroup has become the largest integrated circuit company in China, and its development strategy is exceptionally simple. That is, buy, buy, buy. It is also called a capital acquirer in the chip sector. In six years, Tsinghua Unigroup and its subsidiaries have launched mergers and acquisitions offers to more than 20 companies, investing more than 100 billion RMB. The head of the group, Zhao Weiguo, has not shied away from how it operates its capital, saying, "Capital mergers and acquisitions is only a means to an end. The technology industry is the root. The reality is, the IC industry is characterized by long investment return cycles." Tsinghua Unigroup has been using short-term loans, rolling over to create long-term loans. These made the group's cumulative liabilities too large and its financing structure unbalanced. Eventually, it was swallowed up by the capital storm. Zhao once boasted of buying TSMC. He is just an investor, a stock speculator. If I had to say something, I would be cursed long ago. What a joke! The 16 nanometer process. It is not by talking with your mouth. Not something to just buy with money. Tsinghua Unigroup can buy, buy, buy thanks to the investment from the government. During the 13th five-year plan period, i.e., from 2016 to 2020, the China Development Bank, which is also the main funder of the big fund, granted a credit of 100 billion RMB to Tsinghua Unigroup. During the period when Zhao Weiguo was in charge of Tsinghua Unigroup, both Phase One and Phase Two of the Big Fund, led by Deng Wenwu, invested 700 million RMB and 189 million RMB, respectively, in Unisoc, a subsidiary of Tsinghua Unigroup. The two funds, Phase One and Phase Two, currently hold approximately 14% and 3.7% of the shares, respectively. The Big Fund Phase One also invested in two projects led by Tsinghua Unigroup at the time, including Hebei Zhixin Technology Investment Company Limited and Yangtze Memory Technology Corporation. The current shareholding ratios are 49% and 24%, respectively, and the total investment size is close to 30 billion RMB, or over US 4.4 billion. Due to debt, Tsinghua Unigroup abandoned its plan to build RAM memory chip manufacturing plants in Chongqing and Chengdu in southwest China earlier this year. At this point, we don't know the extent of connections in this network of corruption. Still, it is enough to reveal that when the chip industry becomes a national strategy, but with no real oversight, it becomes a disaster zone of corruption and a big cake for those in the circle to get rich for themselves. Senior CCP officials have referred to the chip industry on various occasions as a bottleneck industry holding back China's development. Why? Because China cannot make high-end chips to this day. American chip technology is far ahead of the world. In an era when the CCP had a good relationship with Europe and the U.S., especially with the U.S., the CCP acquired a lot of technology by exchanging the market for technology. Many projects in Europe and the U.S. are in collaboration. It even stole and bought lots of technology, and according to the momentum at the time, it was profitable. 
However, the former U.S. President Donald Trump's administration launched an investigation into China's ZTE and an embargo on China's Huawei in 2018, blacklisting and embargoing more than 600 Chinese high-tech companies and high-end manufacturing companies, as well as universities and research institutions. The U.S. and its allies have gradually become more guarded against the CCP's technology theft, and the high-tech sector between China and the U.S. has begun to de-link. Chip technology is a massive, systematic project which is built up from generation to generation, and it's very difficult for those who are lagging to catch up with the advances in a short period. When U.S. technology and products are no longer available to Chinese companies, it leads to a bottleneck phenomena for China. And it happens beyond just the manufacturing sector. For example, the chip design tools EDA is an American company. Without such a tool, it is impossible to design a high-end chip. Chinese design tool companies can't fill the void left by the EDA tools. So even today, Chinese chip companies still haven't escaped their past mode of operation. In late July of 2022, research firm Tech Insights reported that China's largest chipmaker SMIC produced and shipped seven nanometer chips in 2021 that appeared to have broken American sanctions, but allegedly copied Taiwan's TSMC technology. Previously, TSMC sued SMIC twice for copying its process technology. On July 27th, the U.S. Senate passed sweeping legislation to subsidize the domestic semiconductor industry, hoping to boost companies as they compete with China and alleviate a persistent shortage that has affected everything from cars, weapons, washing machines, and video games. This is a bad day for President Xi and the Chinese Communist Party. The slumbering giant that is America has finally awakened to the challenge that we face from. The People's Republic of China, their aggressive posture in the region, and the potential they would have of cutting off our access to advanced semiconductors. The so-called Chips and Science Act is purportedly aimed at bolstering the competitive edge of the U.S.'s sci-tech and chip industries. However, certain provisions in the act restrain normal sci-tech cooperation between China and the U.S. China is firmly against it. China-U.S. science and technology cooperation serves the interests of both sides and promotes the progress of humanity. Imposing restrictions and seeking decoupling will only hurt others and oneself alike. In the meantime, China stresses reliance on our own efforts to drive the nation's development. No restriction or suppression will hold back China's sci-tech development and industrial progress. Xi Jinping has repeatedly proposed to fight the tough technical bottleneck battle. After each speech, there would be new actions taken by the Chinese government. In the 14th five-year plan announced on March 12, 2022, that is the outline of the so-called 2021-2025 and the so-called 2035 long-term goals. Integrated circuits are listed by the CCP as one of the core areas of strengthening originality and leading scientific and technological research. Bloomberg reported that the CCP planned to burn nearly 9.5 trillion RMB in the 14th five-year plan. The failure of the big fund will probably make the Communist Party's top brass realize that just throwing money at it isn't enough. In eight years, the outside world has not seen the investment of the big fund break any bottleneck. However, the earthquake happening in the industry has directly shown people that there is a deep corruption in the Chinese chip industry. The Chinese media reported that during the period of investment by the big fund, some semiconductor factories cost only more than 200 million RMB to build, but it claimed to the public that it cost nearly 2 billion RMB. There were many opaque places in between. Powerful local interests have also sought government funding by supporting projects to receive subsidies. Chinese media reported that from January to May of 2021, some 15,700 new semiconductor companies were registered. Three times as much as the same period the previous year. Amid the chip-making boom, companies in construction, medicine, clothing, and cement have also turned to making chips. None of those businessmen and officials involved in the chip industry actually believed they could do the job. All they cared about was how to get a piece of the cake. Not surprisingly, there have been frequent failures and shutdowns subsequently. In 2020, China's official media reported that across China, at least six chip projects at the 10 billion RMB level had failed. 
For example, Wuhan Hongxin Semiconductor Manufacturing Company with an investment of 128 billion RMB, or nearly US 19 billion, was established in 2017 and was once the star project in Wuhan Hubei province. Its capital chain broke in 2020, and in 2021, after an investigation by the Chinese media, its entire investment case was found to be a fraud. Wuhan Hongxin was eventually taken over by the local government. In truth, the backwardness of China's chip industry has been closely linked to the red gene of corruption from the very beginning. The role and development of the electronic information industry by the former vice minister of metallurgical industry, Ma Bin, describes. Before 1984, China's IC industry was in sync with Japan and far ahead of South Korea. However, in 1984, China's investment in research in the electronics industry plummeted from 2.32% of GDP to less than 0.6%. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, the total investment in fixed assets in China's national IC industry was only US 300 million. While Korea, Japan, and Taiwan were making a big push in the chip industry, China's semiconductor industry sank, and its ranking fell at a very fast pace. In the chip field, from 1984 to 1990, China introduced outdated wafer production lines from abroad that were phased out, most of which had no commercial value. The then Ministry of Electronics Industry delegated the management of the vast majority of state-owned electronics enterprises to the local governments of provinces and cities. In the absence of constraints, corruption in state-owned enterprises intensified. Under the banner of the imported projects, senior officials could visit abroad legitimately. They could even receive high kickbacks and arrange for their children to settle abroad, resulting in the strange image of a nationwide frenzy to import obsolete technologies. Guess who the Minister of Electronics Industry was at the time? It was Zhang Zemin, who served as the Minister of Electronics Industry from June 1983 to June 1985. Zhang gained the trust of Deng Xiaoping, the second-generation party leader, and officially became the General Secretary of the CCP because of his staunch attitude in suppressing the students during the Tiananmen Massacre of June 4, 1989. One of the essential aspects of Jiang's philosophy of governance is to rule the country by corruption, and the silent toad catches the fly. Since then, corruption has deepened at an unprecedented speed in China's official, commercial, scientific and technological, educational and cultural spheres. According to public information, Jiang Zemin gave his son Jiang Mianhong the lead in the matter of developing chip autonomy in 1999. Jiang Mianhong served as Vice President of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and President of the Shanghai Branch for many years, and has long held the reins of China's science and technology sector. What he was in charge of at the Chinese Academy of Sciences was the country's high-tech research and the commercialization of research results. High technology, like finance, has been invested by the powerful families of the Chinese Communist Party. It is just not clear as to whom Xi Jinping will implicate in this anti-corruption campaign in the chip industry. But what is certain is that China's high-end chips have never been developed because the funds from the state have been divided up among various players. While some education and research units have received the money, they wouldn't bother to devote themselves to research. In this manic and competitive environment in China, faith is gone, and power and money have become the only criteria for measuring one's success. If the fundamental problems in the system are not solved, the anti-corruption campaign, no matter how long it lasts, will not be able to solve the complex problem of China's chip bottleneck.